Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. My name is Oliver and in this video I'm going to show you how I turned a bargain find 10 euro kids toy castle mansion building into a wargaming table. This video has a whole lot of new techniques, things I've never tried before. I'd never done a resin pour, I'd never done so many snow effects and I'd never done or used air dry clay milliput. But I'm really hoping you guys can learn something with me and we can learn something together on this journey. Now this board did take quite a while and it never started out as a big snowy build like this. This kind of evolved and adapted throughout the whole build, which was probably a six month process. I, I kind of got stuck on it at some point. I wasn't quite sure what to do. I tripped to Dublin several Gumtree ads later and this is what I came home with. This one stood out to me. I felt it would make a really cool wizard's tower, some sort of old abandoned necromancer shack in the middle of nowhere. Of course, kids toys come to this use. They are kids toys. They have lots of little gaps like this and things that need working on to make them look better. But we'll get to that later because we start here at the very beginning with some five mil ply cut into 22 by 30 inch pieces surrounded and supported by two by one beading. This is the casual war cry kill team table and a multiple of any 40k or age of sigma. Then it's onto foam. This is 25 mil foam, the cheap stuff picked up from the local builder's yard. This also is the same stuff really that comes in packing for a microwave, a fridge, a freezer, or any of that kind of stuff. It's the really bobbly stuff, it's cheap, it doesn't really matter. The only thing is it's messy, so make sure you've got a Hoover on hand. Now I'm using this and I'm gonna build it into the, the hill because I want to hide this big gap at the back and I don't really trust my sculpting skills to be good enough to match exactly the pattern on the back. Then it's cutting up some ground forms. We just want to create rough shapes here. All of this is going to get covered later on anyway, but we want to get some shapes and some ways and places for models to move around the board. Once I'd done one piece, I thought, hell, why not? Let's make it taller. So we've got two pieces of polystyrene on top of each other and a small base for the building. This allows me to build the building into the hill rather than just having a plastic toy sat on top of a bit. And I'm going to make that a rock face. So it looks like it's carved into it. Well, at least that was the initial plan. With the polystyrene cut up and the building in place, it's time to glue it down. And for this, I'm going to use the Geek Gaming Scenics High Grade PVA. This is available from my store, which is based in Ireland in the EU. So if you fancy doing a board like this, I pretty much have all or most of the materials used in this video. Dollop this down, make sure you've got plenty on there. If you're not going to use PVA, just make sure you don't use something that is melting the foam. This isn't overly important because all of the polystyrene is going to get covered by a stronger, firmer compound later on. This will just hold it and it'll just make sure it is stuck together. Then get some cocktail sticks, jam them through, and this will get you set up for a nice firm base. Building a board like this does take some time and it really does involve probably one too many late nights. Well, that's where this video's sponsor, Athletic Greens, comes into play. AG1 by Athletic Greens is a nutritional supplement designed to help with immune support, energy, and focus. It's made up of 75 high quality, whole food sourced ingredients carefully curated to nourish all of the body's systems. Now I've been drinking AG1 for over three weeks and I've honestly felt a genuine improvement in my focus and energy levels. It's really simple to make. Just add a scoop of powder to water, mix and drink. One scoop, one minute, once a day, every day. Even I can make time for that. Bonus, it actually tastes great. If you're looking to kick in a healthy new regime this year, AG1 is the product for you. Use my link below to get a one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D3K2 and five travel packs free with your first purchase. Right, refreshed and ready to go. Let's get back to the video. We have a whole ton of bobbly polystyrene on show and there's only one really good way to cover this or at least my favorite way is using rock molds. I'm using some casting plaster, which you just mix with water, and I'm going to stick this into rubber silicone molds by Woodland Scenics. It's really easy to do. You just mix it up so it's kind of like a thick milk or a creamy kind of texture. The thicker it is, the quicker it will dry, the thinner it is, the smoother it will be when it fits into the molds. You just have to pat it down and make sure to give the rock mold a spray with some water first. Give it time to dry and then you just pop it out. If you happen to break any of the rock molds at this point, it doesn't really matter. Odds are you're going to be breaking them to make them fit the areas you want them to fit anyway. Then it's the best part. This is the ultimate geek gaming product, modeling compound. This is a mix of casting plaster and some sort of insulation. It's not fibrous, it's not dangerous, but it is amazing. This comes as a powder. You mix this in with water until you get a kind of tuna mayo, egg mayo texture. Do make sure to work in small areas because this does dry quite quickly. That is part of its charm. 
You can use this to cover and shove the rock molds in. You can also sculpt this. Just make sure you act quick enough. If you're not used to it, practice first, do smaller areas. This sets rock solid. You can spray on top of it and you can do anything you like. I like to cover all of my foam in just a little bit because I use a lot of spray cans. And this is the kind of finish you can get. It looks rough now, but we will do more to it later. With the core of the ground form done, it's now time to move on to details. Now, if you remember, this kid's toy building had a kind of underground open bit at the back. So I figured I might make this into some sort of cellar, maybe somewhere where the wizards or the necromancers could dump the bodies once they've drained the life force out. I'm just using some coffee stirrers I got for free from Costa Coffee. Uh, you know, you could acquire these in any way you wish. If you feel like buying a coffee and stealing 50 coffee stirrers, well, maybe that's up to you. I think this looks quite good. I just used casting plaster, really, really smooth, and this let it fit in. I did run into a problem. I had no tools. The only tool set we have in this house is my partner's tool set, the SheFix kit. And these are Kira's tools. They're pink, they're wonderful, and they do the job. I took off all of the kiddie elements, anything I felt I couldn't use in their wargaming board. I did discover a battery pack for an LED light in the center of the board, but it didn't work and I'm not really great at electric, so I left it. Oh, and my sister had a baby and I shot some B-roll, so there's a, a baby for you. This toy, like most kids' toys, has a lot of plastic edges. I thought I'd turn these into shelving. Using our handy coffee stirrers, I now glued these to all of any edges and anything I thought would look more interesting with some textures. It's onto spray cans. I got some cheap black spray cans and I sprayed the whole building. I felt sure the building wasn't ready, but I felt I wanted to see what it might look like when we got some color on it. And this sort of helped me envisage how I want this building to look. I cut up some of these smoother edges. It's obviously meant to be a collapsed wall and no collapsed wall would fall in a perfectly straight line. So I cut out several chunks just to give it a bit more of a, a natural feel. It was a kind of bendy plastic. I have cut this plastic before, so any knife will do it, just preferably something sharp. Remember to cut away from yourselves and be safe. The other issue I had with the stones is they are incredibly thin. We're talking one or two mil and no stones in any kind of scale would be that thin. I decided to try and add some thickness to it by using some foam. Now this foam you can sculpt, you can put engravings into it and it would look quite decent. I cut everything to fit in anywhere I wanted this to happen. I got my pencil out, I drew round the marks and then I was going to draw the stones to match on the other side so it matched with the stone that was showing. This, for me, actually didn't work. It felt like a lot of work. It took ages, so I tried something new. Now, I've had this sat around for ages. This is air drying clay, das clay. There are loads of different brands. You just take out a little lump and you can sculpt it. I've got one of the Games Workshop sculpting tools here and stick it on. Now, this actually worked really, really well. I was really happy with the results. I'd never done this before. I'd never used this. It took a while. I thought I'd show you in time lapse just how much there was to do. This is maybe an hour's worth of work maybe more, I'm not quite sure, but it was actually quite satisfying and the end result was pretty good and I hope you'd agree. If you haven't tried air drying clay before, give it a go. I have no particular sculpting skills, but I still managed to get the job done. It's onto the best part, spray cans. So with the building kind of looking how we want it to look, I smashed some spray onto it. This is cheap Poundland spray cans generally, spraying from above and trying not to get too much overspill. The light gray here, I use this to emphasize some other parts on the building as well. And I use this on the inside and the outside. And there you can see the bricks I sculpted myself against the bricks that were already on the building. Put this in place along with all the extra rock molds. And that is how the board is looking. I then decided to build up another landform on the other side. This wasn't still going to be a river at this point. I was just gonna make it as a sort of open valley, but I felt the board was lacking something on the other side. And if you were to play it, one player would have a distinct advantage. And that isn't generally what you want on a gaming table. Again, I hit the whole board with black and then spray some gray xenophils over the rock molds, just using the cheap stuff. There are other ways to do this, but I wanted the board to be quite dark. And at this point, I had now decided I was going to make a frozen lake. No board would be complete without some trees. So using the Woodland Scenics tree armatures and the Geek Gaming's tree foliage, I made my own trees. I didn't do a full video here, but I have done a video previously on the channel. So do check that one out and I will show you how to make these trees. They're quite fun and they're quite easy. Back with some modeling compound to fit them into the board and smooth them out. I stuck several trees in various places around the board. Basically anywhere I thought the board would be enhanced by having a tree there. So covering open gaps, open planes and adding more height into this build. That's always gonna look better. And when you start adding snow onto it, you're gonna wish you had some trees. 
This next step is dead simple and it really brings the board to life. Grabbing some Geek Gaming Fast Dry Basing Glue, it's like a PVA but extra tacky. Run a bead underneath all of the rocks and we are going to simulate fallen broken rocks like you'd get naturally out in the wild. Using Grim Dark City Rubble and then Volcanic Island, a finer dark material, just throw this at the board. As you can see, there's no real care. I'm not placing big or small chunks anywhere. I'm just trying to make this look as natural as possible. Add the finer Volcanic Island. I am doing particularly dark bases here. You can, of course, use any rock colors you like, depending on what kind of board you're going for. The ground has also been covered with a bit of brown spray as well. It's static grass time. Now, this is something I haven't used a lot, but it's something I feel I want to get better at. Using a static grass applicator and some four and six mil dead grass from Geek Gaming, surprise, surprise, I'm gonna give this a go. So using some PVA, tap this and bob this in little areas where you feel grass should grow. Now, as we haven't covered the whole ground in any kind of ground cover, this is just spray cans over the modeling compound, I need to try and add some height and texture to the board. Now, there is a reason I haven't added ground cover everywhere, and that's because I don't want any pigments to seep through the entirety of the board. Of course, some areas and some spaces is fine, but overall, I, want, I need the ground to be dark, and that way it will contrast better against the snow. The applicator works fine. You could go another coat again if you wanted, but I did have one issue where it wouldn't fit underneath the trees. My applicator is quite big, so I'm going to use some pine forest ground cover, and very much like we did with the Grimdark City rubble, I'm just gonna smoosh this on and this will this will simulate the undergrowth that happens around the bases of trees. As you can see there, there's lots of different colors and lots of different textures. I'm using dead tufts to help accentuate the grassy fields because when you look out in nature, you often see grass in one big pile with tons of tufts leading up to it. Yeah, grass doesn't just grow on its own in the middle of nowhere. So there are some tufts and I do apply a lot more. Using the matte scenic sealant, this will kind of glue everything together. You can hit the board with isopropanol first and then with this and that will help it seep through into any of the recesses and, and make sure all of the materials are secure. Now we didn't do ground cover everywhere so we didn't need to do that. The board is now coming together. You can see we have some grassy areas, lots of rocky areas, the trees are in place, the building is there and we are kind of ready to start finishing the next steps on this board. I do need to do a lot more work to the building as well and I want to add more details to the board. So I found an old sprue from some Mega Gargants. I clipped these off and I wasn't sure what bits I want to use yet, but as we are doing a lake and it's an old abandoned thing, I feel like some broken rocks or some old barrels or maybe a dead body will help. If you have an airbrush, it's really helpful, but it is not necessary. I repeat, you do not need an airbrush. I am using it because it helps me add a really nice smooth gradient, but you could easily do this with a paintbrush and any cheap craft paints. We now need to try and sell this flat piece as a river. So riverbeds, generally, we will see more color until it starts to get deeper. I don't have much room for a deep pour. This was never originally designed to be done as a resin lake. So I'm going to have to try and simulate this by using the airbrush. So I'm going to do a brown color because I want this to be a more late evening snowboard. So I want things to be a little bit darker than they may appear normally. I'm pretty happy the board itself is almost done. So it's time to get back to the building and do a bit more detailing work. I already have the Mornfang brown in the airbrush, so I may as well use this to do all of the brown on the building. And hopefully without having to use the brush, I maybe, you know, don't need to dry brush everything here. I can just get this on and start getting some nice even coats. The building now has got the stone colors done with spray cans and the brown. We obviously need to clean this up and we will go in with more details now using lead belcher, shades, washes. I'm just using some metal here, the lead belcher in for these metal bars. You can use any colors you like for anything. And then I'm using really, really thinned down non oil. I didn't actually have any cheap black craft paint. Otherwise I probably would have used that because it's cheaper, but uh, I was under a bit of a time restraint. I just wanted to get it done. Then I'm dry brushing some of the extra details I'm gonna add onto this board. I figured we've had a collapsed building. Why not add some broken stone into the river? And I think barrels will look pretty cool when I add the snow effects in. To do a bit more work to the building, I'm gonna use base ready city rubble, much like again we did with the undersides of the rocks. Just drop this into areas where you want to, to break up the building. I'm using this generally to hide some of the holes I was unable to, to fill earlier and to try and blend the building into the board. I realized this looks very light, but I didn't want to use the Grim Dark City rubble again because that was too dark. So we can throw this everywhere, absolutely smother it. It doesn't matter because we're going to be covering this with the sealant anyway to make sure everything is nice and sticky. 
seal the bejesus out of it. Uh, you can use watered down PVA if you wished. If that helps, it just takes longer to set. I wanted it to be matte. I didn't want it to be shiny at this point either. And the building now is starting to fit into the board. I'm happy with the board itself. The building's coming along. I just need to make these look darker now because they look a very different color to the actual stones. But I'm going to use more black wash and try and just tap this into the areas to give it that gray tone. And now, once you get the kind of color consistency right, it starts looking more like the stones from the building. It blends nicely into the board and a lot of this is going to be covered by snow later on anyway. So any mistakes you make, it doesn't matter. Dirty down rust. I hadn't used this much, but I've seen a lot about it on the internet. I know lots of other channels have been using it and I've seen lots of people using it on models. So I figured this is the right kind of thing to be making rusty, right? Like an old bit of metal somewhere. <laughs> I decided to put it on heavy, tapped it off, watered it down loads, and then went back in again with more to, to add a thicker areas at the bottom and just some places to add a splash of color. And the end result actually was amazing. Just make sure the pot itself, if you're using this dirty down rust, is nice and warm, really well shaken, and you will get a brilliant finish. Ah, the hot glue gun, the staple of lots of hobbyists, but something I very rarely use. The reason I'm using this is we are about to approach the scary part of the video, the resin pour, my very first resin pour. I need to try and create an edge to make sure the resin doesn't just leak out of the side of the board and off the end. So I'm using the hot glue gun and some plastic I found. Uh, it is absolutely freezing in the studio at this point. It's the middle of winter here in Ireland. You have to work pretty quickly because the glue would dry before I could get it on. And this was actually the second time I'd done the plastic because I had to rip it off the first time. This for me was the worst part of the entire build and the video because making sure this is liquid tight is pretty difficult to do. I have used tape. I ended up having to add a whole ton of other bits onto this as well. And to try my best to make sure there would be no leaks, I used some UV resin. All you do with this, this is from Green Stuff World, is pour this down the side of the board and use a UV torch to set this and it will set instantly. This is the resin I'm using. It costs about 30 euros. It's a really beginner kit for 300 mil, so it isn't really a lot, but I was a bit scared to try any more than this. You mix two parts of one and one part of the other. It's actually really simple. It doesn't smell too bad. Do wear gloves. Try not to get this everywhere. It wasn't as daunting as I thought it would be. It's pretty hard to mess up. The measurements are just there. Give this a good mix. Try and avoid getting loads of bubbles, so don't mix it really, really fast. Bubbles are something we don't want in the water and then pour it in. And just like that, going from the worst part of the board build to the best, it's pouring the resin in. I have to say, this is extremely satisfying to do, and it made me feel like a real board building hobbyist for the first time in quite a while. I know it isn't a deep pour. It's only really three to five mil deep. I do end up losing a little bit where I haven't sealed the edge correctly. But overall, it, it just looks great. And it's a whole new thing I'd never tried before. And if you guys are scared to do it, don't be. Just go buy a little set, even if it's a bit more expensive than buying it on bulk, and you will have a good time. It does auto level, so make sure the board is flat and even. Mine wasn't to begin with. It took about 18 hours for me to let this set to a point where I could work with it. So just make sure the board is, is even. But there you go, look. Now that's turned from a bit of weird ground to what looks more like a river. This bit, Again, very quickly put me back to the worst bit of the build. Pulling this off was an absolute nightmare. Uh, I had secured it so much with loads more hot glue, more UV resin, tons of tape. I glued plastic under the bottom as well because I caught a little leak. And taking this off, it just broke apart. It was terrible. I had to get a knife to try my best to edge the sides off. It pulled some of it away at the edges, but that's okay, we can fix that. But there you can see, look, some of the damage done to the sides. So I'll have to work on that for the next time. And maybe if you guys have any ideas, let me know. Now I'm going to try and make this look more like ice. So grab those CDs for those of you who weren't around when CDs were a thing. I'm sure you can still find them in your parents' collections. Um, break them up and then spray them with a polyurethane varnish or any kind of varnish. This is a cheap one from the Poundland to give it a kind of misty effect. And we're going to use this to simulate broken ice. The resin has been cured for about 18 hours, so it's still ever so slightly tacky. And if you push hard enough, you can just squish it in. If I'd had a deeper pour, I could have done this and poured the resin over the top, but I didn't really have the opportunity to do so. This was very much a case of trust the process. To begin with, I didn't feel it was working, but by the time I'd applied all of the icicles on, it was actually looking pretty good. It was kind of how I wanted it to be. The fact they sat just above the water really did start to sell the effect that these were ice bits floating on top of the river. 
but we needed to make the river look like it was moving. So I ran out of Mod Podge, unfortunately, but I did try the green stuff world splash gel. We are using this to simulate the waves. Paint it on, or you can use an airbrush if you have the Mod Podge and it's thin enough to blow it to make it look like waves. It will dry clear, but actually I really liked the color that we'd gotten off this and I quite liked the way the splash gel had come up against the icebergs. As you can see, the icebergs have gone black. Now they haven't gone black, it's because they've dried and the underneath is very dark and they are see-through. Possibly something we could do next time is spray those with a dash of white as well, just to sell the snow effect. Talking of snow effects, it's nearly time. I tried to protect the river because it was still a bit tacky and I'm using the Geek Gaming Snow Powder and Snow 1 mil Static Grass. Cover the entire board with varnish. Go heavy with the varnish. This is the cheap pound land stuff again, because this is what we're going to use to stick the snow down. Then just drop the snow from above. You can use a sieve for this. You could use a spoon or you could just use your hands. I was using my hands because I wanted to try and get various piles of it, but I did go back over with a spoon and a sieve to get a finer finish. It starts to look awesome. I was a little bit worried this would ruin the entire board. It's a bit of a scary process but just trust the process. Lob the snow everywhere, straight from above. And then if you want other areas to be covered, just throw it in at an angle. I tried to throw this in to this building from the front face here to get into there a little bit more. But to be honest, just dropping it from above looked absolutely awesome. Use the one mil static grass to give you the fluffy piles of snow. You don't need to use an applicator for it. Just drop it on and it will look really, really soft. It was so good. I wasn't happy with these icebergs at this point, but once I'd smashed some varnish on and then tapped the snow into it, it started to look more like the icebergs we wanted to see. That I don't mind a bit of the dark showing through, but the snow has settled on top and by jamming this into it, it looked a little more realistic. I also wanted to bring back a little bit of the contrast on the cliff faces, so I got a damp cloth and just tapped this over all the rock edges. It pushed the snow into the, some of the recessed bits, but allowed some of the rock faces to show through. Then I cleaned up on the water. I just got a wet brush and tapped this in, trying to separate the icebergs again from the water to make them look like they were standing alone. Finally, just to make them pop, I edge highlighted pretty roughly with Clorox white all of the edges of the snow. Now you can see the water has gone a funny light blue. That's because it had gotten wet, but it's set back solid. I covered the board in varnish and this is what we ended up with. The board at this point is done. It is complete. Let me know what you think in the comments below. There were a few things I would do differently. I think I would color the river differently again. I think I would make sure if I was going to do a water pour, I would have the board built into a kind of box and then I wouldn't have to worry about leakage on the sides. But overall, I'm pretty happy for this for my first punt at a board like this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. How do you feel the toy has fit into the board? For 10 euros, it's pretty cheap, it's pretty fun, and it's perfect for wargaming. I will do more kids toy boards. If you haven't seen my Coliseum Playmobil one, do check that out as well. And if you want to support the channel, make sure to check all the links down below. There are links there for my shop where you can buy pretty much all of the products as well as most of your wargaming needs. There is the Patreon down there, which gets you access to a private discord. And there are some other links for affiliates as well. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you in the next one.